Uh, Root BSD says, I'm working on a video that showcases all of OpenBSD security tech and mitigations. So you OpenBSD fans, go check out Root BSD. That way you can leave me alone about OpenBSD. Welcome back to the Root BSD Technology Channel. Here at the Root BSD Technology Channel, we love all things BSD, Open BSD, Free BSD, Net BSD, and we love GNU slash Linux, and we love all free and open source software. But today, we're still focused on Open BSD because today, Open BSD 7.0 was released. That's right. Look at here. Look at that beautiful art. Open BSD 7.0. Mwah, Picasso. That's amazing. And I've been seeing more and more interest uh, in the uh, around uh, the communities in OpenBSD. So today, what I, th I thought we'd do is I'd go do a rundown of OpenBSD's security technologies and mitigations. And uh, the source material for uh, for for uh, my presentation was, of course, OpenBSD.org, their innovations page, why OpenBSD.rocks, and um, I. Watch this video by Steen, where he did a systematic evaluation of OpenBSD's mitigations. And I definitely highly recommend watching this. Even though Steen is a little critical of OpenBSD's, uh, some of OpenBSD's mitigations, he also praises a lot of the mitigations too, and a lot of the um, kind of the, the the techniques and the technology involved. And I made a wonderful uh, slideshow for you today. security features and mitigations. Now the first security feature that I'm going to discuss is called CARL. OpenBSD will release a unique randomized kernel every install, upgrade, and boot. If an attacker designed an exploit to attack a specific kernel, the exploit would fail when the user updates or reboots because all the parts are in different order and randomized. This feature is called kernel address randomized link. It was first introduced in OpenBSD 6.2. So yes, every time you reboot, uh, you upgrade, uh, OpenBSD will, re will relink uh, a unique randomized kernel. Pledge. Pledge is a system call you can add to a port's code to restrict what system calls that program is allowed to access. A small command line utility that does something benign should not have the ability to open a raw socket or a reserve port or etc. Basically, it's kernel level sandboxing like setcomp in Linux. Chromium, Firefox, and most base utilities in OpenBSD are using Pledge, the Pledge system call. Now, the Pledge system call does have to be added into the code and then compiled. All right, unveil. The unveil system call will restrict the view of the entire file system to a program. For example, Chromium can only see the user's download folder downloads folder in the file system. That way, if an attacker were to compromise your web browser, they would only have access to your downloads folder and could not see the rest of the file system. Yeah, Unveil is pretty neat. Um, and also, uh, if it, you can also add paths to Unveil, so you can add other folders to it. It is customizable. Privilege separation. OpenBSD base utilities make heavy use of privilege separation and privilege dropping also called privilege revocation. Privilege, privilege separation uh, ensures that certain utilities can't be leveraged to do things they have no business doing, like opening a raw socket, reserve port, or a shell. Privilege revocation is implemented so that a program will perform its initial task and then lose some or all of the privileges along the way. Like, uh, like ping, once it, you know, open, once it accesses that, that socket, it, it loses those privileges to do it again. <clears throat> the base system daemons, HTTPD, uh, send mail to people daemon, SSHD, etc. Uh, utilities like ping, ifconfig, and the X11 server, um, and almost all the base utilities in OpenBSD are using privilege, se pr uh, privilege separation and privilege revocation, or privsept, privdrop. Malloc. 
Malloc stands for Memory Allocation Randomization. OpenBSD's Malloc was written by Otto Moorbeek and is very effective. It randomizes memory al allocation over the entire address space. A unique memory layout occurs at the run of every program, making an attacker's job very difficult. Malloc can be used, also used for finding bugs, too. A programmer can use OpenBSD's Malloc to harden and improve their program and safely and sanely allocate memory. See Ted Unank's video, Programming in a Hostile Environment. That's in my, in my playlist. If you guys go to my, my channel front page, I have a, a playlist of OpenBSD talks by developers and interviews. Meltdown Inspector. OpenBSD was on top of Meltdown Inspector right when they began to hit the news. OpenBSD uses separate page tables for the kernel and user land. Hyperthreading is disabled by default in OpenBSD to mitigate Spectre-like attacks. And um, and I remember when this all went down, they they were they were pretty fast on it. And in fact, they they actually ha they were they were left out of the whole disclosure process with Intel. Intel decided to work with all the other operating systems except for OpenBSD, and they cleverly like just by. Um, doing things in the kernel, and Theodorat said, well, it has to be one of these things that's going on, so he cleverly turned everything off, and they just, they caught the bug, and uh, they were accused of breaking embargo, and they weren't even a, a part of the whole process in the first place. He just made a good guess as to uh, what, what was the underlying problem. But yeah, um, and, and also, and hyperthreading is, is, is disabled by default, and Linux decided to, to adopt that after the OpenBSD guys did. Pi. Mm. Pi stands for Position Independent Executable. Every time you execute a binary, the program and its dependencies are loaded into random areas within virtual memory, also referred to as random offsets. Almost everything in OpenBSD is being randomized in some way. The PIDs, memory allocation, address spaces, etc. ARC for random. This family of functions provides higher quality data than those described in RAND, RANDOM, and RAND48. This is OpenBSD's cryptographic random number generator. It was designed to create better 32-bit pseudo-random numbers. OpenBSD has built-in cryptography in its kernel and network stack. And, and it is military-grade encryption. In fact, uh, uh, they, don't, they can't have any Americans work, work on their crypto stack. Signify. The Signify utility creates and verifies cryptographic signatures. A signature verifies the integrity of a message. OpenBSD uses Signify to sign and verify all its binary packages and binary patches via syspatch. Signify is also available in Linux too. It's a great utility. ASLR, libc libcrypto symbols and library order randomization. ASLR stands for Address Space Layout Randomization. Not only is OpenBSD randomizing memory address space, uh, mem the memory address space layout, the libc libcrypto symbols are randomized and so is the order of the libraries every time they are loaded. Repo line. Repo, okay, so I, I was trying, this one kind of went over my head a little bit. I was trying to wrap my mind around it and, and explain it, but honestly, this explanation on why OpenBSD rocks, I just don't think I could, I could word it any differently. So I'll just, I'm going to read it directly from there. Repo line prevents specula speculative execution, Spectre, by isolating branches using an infinite loop that is never executed to prevent the CPU from speculating on the target of an indirect jump. I, yeah, that just, that blows my mind, but it sounds cool. <laughs> and just, you know, I want to, I want to preface this, I'm not a programmer, I'm, 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 I'm just an end user and a hobbyist, and I, but I, I you know, we, how, we can't talk, be always talking about OpenBSD without discussing the security, because the security is a very important part of what OpenBSD is all about. <clears throat> WX. WX is a rule, or I'm sorry, is a memory rule that memory can be written or executed but never both at the same time. Prevents execution of remote payloads, buffer overflows, etc. Historically, browsers like Chromium and Firefox needed to be installed with a, in a partition that has WX allowed in the, uh, the file system tab, and were compiled with, uh, they had to be compiled with use WX needed. 
However, both browsers do have WX natively now. You can turn off the WX Loud, and the browsers will still work. I've tried it before. RecGuard and Stack Protector. OpenBSD has a stack protector called RecGuard that utilizes cookies in the memory stack to prevent linear buffer overflows. And this is a quote from OpenBSD.org. It uses a per-function random cookie located in the read-only elf.openbsd random data section to consistency, consistency check the return address on the stack. So there you go. Stack protector with your magic cookie. Reduced attack surface. OpenBSD is notorious for deleting old, crusty code, breaking backwards compatibility, and all in all trimming the fat in the code, even the white spaces. Many new users are surprised to see how little memory OpenBSD uses in the background. The daemons and processor processes are all small and lean to reduce attack surface. Libra SSL. After the heart bleed fiasco with OpenSSL, Ted Unangst forked and, uh, forked and Libra SSL was born. It's, it's just open, regular OpenSSL but with tons of code removed. A lot of, a lot of stuff was taken out. But it's still API compatible with regular OpenSSL. It is still actively maintained. Some Linux distros adopted Libra SSL in the past, but only the OpenBSD project and, as far as I know, PlayStation uses Libra SSL, yes. Libra SSL is used in the PlayStation operating system. Packet Filter, or PF. PF is OpenBSD's native firewall program. From the man page, packet filtering takes place in the kernel. A pseudo device, devpf, allows user land processes to control the behavior of the packet filter through an IO control interface. These commands there are commands to enable and disable the filter, load rule sets, add and remove individual rules or state table entries, and retrieve statistics. The most commonly used functions are covered by PF control. So OpenBSD has its own built-in firewall. It's called Packet Filter, and PF is used in the popular PF Sense firewall utility. And I mean, every every lot of high-end people are using a, a or a, you know like tech people are using PFSense, like, you know, I think even Linus and Linus Tech Tips uses PFSense. So PF is very effective, very, very well used, mostly in PFSense, but OpenBSD, you can roll your own PF too if you want it. You can turn it into a firewall. Recall Array, or I'm sorry, Reallocate Array. Realloc Array, or Reallocate Array, is a libc function that purges data before allocating new memory. It will also check for integer overflows for multiplication. Duaz. Duaz is an elegant minimal reimagining of the popular program sudo. Duaz allows you to execute a command as another user or as root. That's it. It's very simple. That was the whole point of Duaz. It was just to, to, to simply give the user the ability to, to not have to run as root or not have to run as super user. It can be configured easily with one simple line like permit foobar as root or permit wheel. <clears throat> OpenBSD does have sudo imports though. If you do want to use sudo, we have sudo. <clears throat> map stack and map conceal. The map stack addition to mmap allows opportunistic verification that the stack register points at stack memory. Therefore, catching pivots to non-stack memory, sometimes used in ROP attacks. Now, ROP stands for Return Oriented Programming, and the OpenBSD devs are working hard to remove as many ROP gadgets as possible. I, you know, I, I've, I've heard there's still tons of ROP gadgets. There's, there's a lot of them. So we'll see if, man, if they could ever just get rid of all the ROP gadgets, that'd be fantastic. Map Conceal disallows memory pages to be written to core dumps, preventing accidental exposure of private information. <clears throat> and miscellaneous. Uh, OpenBSD has its own native uh, full disk encryption program called BioControl. It creates a virtual RAID device. Uh, OpenBSD has in-kernel wire, WireGuard, WG, for VPN and privacy. And we also have some other privacy uh, tools too, like uh, IPSEC and OpenIKED, which is the, um, the internet uh, 
key protocol two exchange. I, I probably I probably butchered that. I'm just doing that from memory. Um, so yeah, um, <clears throat> that is uh, some of the some of the big the bigger well known uh, security techniques and mitigations that are in OpenBSC. There's some smaller ones that I just are harder to explain because I'm not a C programmer or me even for me to understand. And I'll link in in the description of the video uh, my resources. So if you want if you wanted to dig deeper into this, you can you know. Read, read the you know read papers by OpenBSD or watch that video by Steen. Steen's a, a security professional and he knows way more about that than I do. All right, and if you made it to the end of this video, you're awesome. And that's right, viewer, you're awesome. And I really appreciate you. And I appreciate every everybody that watches my videos and all my subscribers. And I really just enjoy you guys. And if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe uh, and click that notification bell to get all your notifications. And also check me out on Patreon. I am on Patreon. Just look up BSD on Patreon. All right. And I just want to let you know that this entire video from uh, conception, the art was done with GIMP, uh, the recording was done with FMMPEG, and it was rend it was rendered with OpenBSD's Cade and Live, all natively on the CPU, running OpenBSD 7.0 current. So, uh, so this whole video was produced using OpenBSD and nothing else. And just uh, if you haven't tried OpenBSD, try them out. Uh, OpenBSD 7.0 was just released. Uh, Mental Outlaw did a video installing OpenBSD. I have videos installing OpenBSD. Or come, you know. Join us on Distrotute or join, you know, Mastodon or the Fediverse, and then just look up RootBSD at Distrotute. You can find me if you have any questions about uh, installing OpenBSD or if you're running into troubles like that. Or, uh, or go on our OpenBSD. That's the our, uh, OpenBSD subreddit. All right, guys. Well, that's all. I hope you got something out of this. And as always, uh, you know, stay safe and stay strong.